movie is definitely about guns and surfing. I know that much. This credit here is for being married to the director. Hi. Johnny Utah. Early versions of the script had this character named Michael Michigan, Danny Texas, and Andrew North Dakota. You know nothing. In fact, you know less than nothing. Jon Snow. Hey, you're a real blue flame special, aren't you, son? Young, dumb, and full of What the f*** is a blue flame special? And how does this relate to the amount of semen and math skills one has? I've been in the field for 22 years. I've fired my piece over 19 times in the line of duty. Cameras catch Gary Busey saying all the shit he normally says to anyone who will listen. Ex-President's robbery gang is extremely biased against all things Gerald Ford. If you're a clearly professional bank robbing outfit and you've evaded capture for so many years, why would you give detectives anything to work on? Which this is clearly going to allow them to use. 27 banks in three years. Sounds like some truly law enforcement if you ask me. And they vanish like a virgin on prom night. I mean, they vanish. I just realized that the dialogue of this movie supplied half the world's watch list with their own personal catchphrases. Anytime you two are finished jerking off watching MTV. Those cops disrespect those other cops cliche. Man, LA has changed a lot during that time. The air got dirty and the sex got clean. What the actual f Is this a period piece? Is this pre-1981 before AIDS? Also, if you look at the screenwriter's picture on the IMDb, that explains it. Well, maybe I can do better than some over-the-hill burnout. Keanu Reeves' performance in this movie accidentally inspires the birth of Paul Walker, and the movie itself inspired The Fast and the Furious. So it was only a matter of time before those two got together. Yeah, I'm mad! Good and mad! Yeah! What do you want to do about it? Keanu BC. Cops drinking beer on the job hope you, too, will drink Corona. They're traveling on the money, going where the waves are. Why has this asshole Pappas never once looked into the surfing community for these robbers if he's looked for them for so long? He found all sorts of evidence and sat on it, I guess waiting for Keanu to show up. Discount future panic room, Kirsten Stewart. Why can't I just walk around with this thing under my arm and act stone, ask a few questions? Isn't that typically your acting style anyway? How hard can it be? Surfing? Really super incredibly difficultly hard. Hey! My name's Johnny Utah! She heard that. Also, how is this undercover operation ever supposed to succeed if he's using his real name? And now, for your viewing enjoyment, the female surfer will stealthily undress while the undercover cop watches her. I'm not sure why we needed to see this, but I got some great tips on how to change without exposing my privates. Johnny Utah makes his move on Tank Girl at the same spot where Brian O'Connor and Dominic Toretto bonded over shrimp. I mean, what do you want? Why do you keep hanging around here? He just got here. Uh, shrimp and fries to go. Wow, obvious stay away from me vibe is obvious, and yet Johnny will ignore it, because in the movies the protagonist can't be a stalker, he can only be right. Football scholarship, Phi Beta Kappa. Is this gonna take a really long time? Tyler would be amazing at CinemaSins. So Tyler agrees to give surfing lessons to someone who's obviously stalking her. Also, man, this girl must have really been jonesing for someone to teach surfing to, because she's like all in on day one and sh Too many minutes of surfing lessons. I mean, couldn't the movie have just started here? That's Bodhi. They call him the Bodhisattva. Is that the new Kula Shaker song? Also, Utah doesn't ask what the hell that means because, quite frankly, he's still trying to figure out what the other words meant. That's a surfboard, all right. Johnny stumbles on the whole gang of thieves after a day of surf training. And maybe it's supposed to be two weeks for all I know, but in that case, I'm still sending the convenience that Tyler and Bodie know each other. Out of all the surfers in LA, this is the guy Utah's looking for. Good catch. And that's all it takes to undercover cop your way into this gang. Ah! Hey! The number of vehicles with their lights on required for this night beach football game. Movie unintentionally inspires the replacements. Utah gets hit by several blocks while Bodie runs full speed and still catches up to him. <laughs> Taking sports too seriously. Don't you know who this is? First off, why would he? But second off, why doesn't he? Wouldn't there have been a small introduction before playing this game? This is Johnny Utah. We were gonna kick his ass, but because he's a pseudo celebrity from three years ago playing football for Ohio State, I guess he's okay. Also, these surfers remember Johnny Utah's college football days, which is awesome for helping him get into this gang, but I'm still hung up on the fact that he's using his real f***ing name on an undercover assignment. There's virtually no reason for Johnny's boss to be pissed off right now, other than that cop movies from this era always needed to have a boss who threatens to kick the hero off the case after every scene. Harp, we're working undercover. It takes time. You're also working undercover? Since when? What have you been doing? Over the last two weeks, you two have produced exactly squat! These guys have been robbing banks for a couple of summers now, and the evidence gathered from those investigations didn't produce anything, and I'm pretty sure it didn't lead to all this yelling. Anyway, what's his problem? We're handling our caseload, I'm surfing on my own time. Johnny basically proves that John C. McGinley's character is only in this movie to satisfy what the audience expects out of a cop movie. 28 robberies. And what do we get from it? After all these robberies, why doesn't the FBI have an agent around nearly every bank in the city? Or at least have a couple guys driving around several target areas. And surfers are territorial. They stick mostly to certain breaks. They're going to find these guys based on going around to several beaches and plucking hair samples from tons of random surfers, based on the idea that they apparently mostly surf certain breaks. That's pretty convenient. Latigo Beach. 
Nice point break. Roll credits. Discount Anthony Keat. Holy sh**. Only in movies made in the 90s or earlier can people get punched 52 goddamn times and show very little effect of said beating. Also, Bodhi X Machina. They only live to get radical. They don't have any real understanding of the sea, so they'll never get the spiritual side of it. <laughs> it's that place where you lose yourself and you find yourself. That's deep. Really, you could describe just about anything you enjoy doing and take seriously. World's least conspicuous stakeout shift change ever. This is bullshit. This is a bullshit lead. This, this movie sets up these guys to be assholes, but they are absolutely, totally, 100% right. Let it be. It ain't me. 80s party taking place in the early 90s has decidedly 70s soundtrack. Watch yourself, she's a wild one. AKA, I f her already. 50 year storm. What's that? That's kind of a legend. No, it's real. It's absolutely real. I'm having so much fun at this drunken surfer campfire, I almost didn't even notice the wall of exposition smacking me in the face. Time for a little stealth mission you hope for. This is the only time in movie history I can think of that is actually a parody of itself. Look, a bunch of headlights shining toward the water isn't going to make the freaking water visible. And are these guys always changing out car batteries because of their nighttime beach activities? This looks cool on film, but totally drenches your arm in lighter fluid. And even if you're going to be far enough away when it lights, your arm's still smelling like lighter fluid for the rest of the night, dog. You don't need to see. Bodhi is like the Obi-Wan Kenobi of surfing. How does a cop go from cop to surfer that can hang on the gnarliest of waves at night with the god of all human surfers within, like, weeks? I, I kind of feel like this romance is bullshit. I love how none of his newfound surfer friends bothered to make sure he woke up before the beat cops started walking the beach. Way too long post-coital morning kiss. Somehow, even though Utah was already super late and spent three days kissing Tyler, he was able to show up to the raid before it started anyway. Even as strictly backup, it's amazing how stupid the cops are, including undercover Keanu in any way whatsoever in this raid. Way to be stealth, asshole. First, that this cop just pops his face up into the window like this. Second, that this asshole inside doesn't notice it at all. Also, pouring beer on Cheerios makes them beerios, just FYI. Movie saves money by simply filming an average everyday morning for Anthony Kiedis. Get Angelo out of there, they're pulling out a f***ing arsenal. Once again, a simple radio transmission can't be heard because either the radio doesn't work or somebody's mowing the lawn. And does this grass even need mowing? It looks perfect already. Speak into the microphone, squid brain. It's almost like the writers of the original Batman series joined forces with the writers of Die Hard 2 and Jimmy Buffett to finish the script. Hero looks at a fractured mirror cliche. Special Agent Utah, I'd like you to meet Agent Dietz. Works for the DEA. He was working deep cover until you... Do law enforcement agencies not cross-check with each other before conducting raids so that this doesn't happen? If they don't, I'm sinning real life here. This shot is supposed to be telling me about his continued relationship with the girl and his own personal struggle to sleep due to his professional f***-ups. But all I can think about is how 90s the nightstand contents are. I'm wondering, an hour into the picture, is all this surfing footage going to lead to Johnny Utah finding out they're the bad guys? Moon surfing. You look like you saw a ghost. Forget about it, kid. They're ghosts. Two basically unrelated comments that have very little to do with actual evidence lead Johnny Utah to a Dr. House moment about these surfers. Also, is Johnny just now realizing Bodie and friends might be the heist masters he's looking for? Really? Seriously? Blinded by kindness this dude was. T.S. lunch at Patrick's Roadhouse. Har har, movie inside joke is not hilarious. So does Johnny Utah make an appearance in his own private Idaho later? Actually he does, a few months later as it turns out. Two meatballs, one tune on wheat. Yep, these are the kind of clueless motherfuckers the FBI sends out on undercover assignments. They like their narcos stupid as posts. <laughs> this guy is still laughing at the comics while Johnny gets some meatball sandwiches. I'm beginning to think that harp guy is right about these two assholes. They actually aren't very good at their jobs. Johnny runs at these fools despite him also being undercover with these fools, which means they now know he's a cop. Which makes me wonder why Johnny was even on this stakeout to begin with. Johnny Utah has Stormtrooper aim. Longest parking garage ever. While switching cars for a quick getaway, it's a good idea to not only torch the original getaway car, but also another random car at a gas station, and to take way too long doing it, so the cops can catch up and the movie can keep happening. Johnny Utah comes in to save the day and completely blows his already should be blown cover. Instead of shooting the leg, as Keanu learns to do by the time speed rolls around, Johnny Utah just runs after this fool. I guess for exercise? This foot chase is almost as riveting as dirt. Dog tossing. What is it about 90s movies and staging action sequences in the concrete LA River? Johnny finally encounters gravity and realism and f***s up his leg, leading to the end of the chase that should probably have miles ago, but whatever. The 90s. <laughs> Friendship anger bullets. So what's the other guy look like? Johnny goes home and immediately phones up the f buddy from his undercover surfer bro assignment, which I guess makes sense from the dick's perspective, but from the criminals just ID'd me during that chase perspective does not make sense at all. Some other time. Girl who is just demanding answers suddenly switches gears and craves only kisses because the movie is ready to move on, I guess. This was never about money for us. It was about us against the system. That system that kills the human spirit. If that's true, then why not give the money to charity or something? 
And is the system supposed to learn a lesson about the human spirit from all this? Also, I guess Point Break was kind of the Matrix of its day. Bodhi is Morpheus, pulling Keanu Reeves out of his boring job and showing him the truth about the system. So you trust me? After that insane speech? Yes. When attempting to stealth kill someone at night, it's best to ensure you and your gun shadow are extra huge on the wall. Just for symbolism and did your parents die in a car accident? Because that is the be-all, end-all fact of facts I've decided to build my reality upon. So I needed you at first, but after that I did- you! I agree with the lady. I wanted to tell you, but I couldn't. I was afraid you'd leave. Keanu, the actor, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to know that I've never known anyone like you before in my life. Even though I barely know you, and I f***ed you like twice. Johnny is somehow stupid enough to believe that maybe it's possible Bodhi and his gang didn't ID him during yesterday's big chase sequence. Johnny, you brought the jump out of a perfectly good airplane! Bodhi senses that Utah's not cut out for FBI work, that he's just an adrenaline junkie like him. But this guy gets no instructions on how to jump out of an airplane, or when to use his parachute, or anything. 40 seconds of accidentally inspiring terminal velocity. How does he know what to do? How does he know how to move his body in order to join the circle? I feel like we missed the part where Utah talked about his service in the army. Josh Finster! Ex-president robbery gang predicts future Keanu Reeves movie. Yeah, he's dead. You can't pull your chute that late and not have serious damage just from terminal velocity. Press play. Hey, I just took you on a skydiving trip that was amazing. Oh, and by the way, I kidnapped your girlfriend. What was the point of all that? Probably just to have a skydiving scene. Why not? Here's another movie where the hero is motivated to go completely against his moral fiber because a girl he f***ed twice is in trouble. Don't you see that's why I need Rosie? I could never do that, man. I could never hold a knife to Tyler's throat. Jeez, a man named Rosie, a woman named Tyler, and anyone named Bodie. So hard to keep up with this stuff. I am an FBI agent! Dick out of the vault. Bodie changes the whole protocol for robbing the banks just so he can teach Utah a lesson or something something system human spirit. Just doesn't make sense for his character whatsoever. Look, if they were prone to making more and more daring bank jobs, this would make sense. But doing the same robbery over and over for the express reason to not get caught, only to change it now? Ludicrous. Why are we going to the vault? We never go to the vault! And he didn't even tell his buddies they were doing that either. Why would you take off your mask? Keanu had a bulletproof vest, FYI. You didn't know that? The f**k's wrong with you? Haven't you ever seen a 90s movie? This guy's death scene acting. You deserve each other, don't you? I mean, you're just as bad as he is. Other than the out-of-nowhere outburst earlier, Harp is pretty much right. Remember, all this is possible because Pappas sent Utah to go buy some meatball sandwiches. And he was laughing at the comics in a newspaper like a seven-year-old while Bodie and his crew did another bank job right in front of them. <laughs> well, that is a good movie moment, but isn't he fired now? And after that, they let Pappas take Johnny with no questions asked. This movie takes place in reality. Seriously, one of the crew just happens to be in a spot where they lucked out behind Pappas? What was he doing? Talking with the ground crew about how the LA Raiders will never move back to Oakland? Uh huh? Shit happens. Is this movie referencing itself or its late 2015 remake? This here is the worst shot since Greedo was made to shoot first. Now that he's bloody and dying, Roach can now fire dead center on Pappas twice. No! No, Pappas wasn't wearing a bulletproof vest? This is some Darwin shit here. I'm not flying, you guys, San Felipe, man. The f***ing plane, start those engines! Well, you make a convincing argument. I didn't see it that way. Let's go, man. Bodie, for some reason, wants to bring Utah along, instead of just killing the final witness here and now and getting the f*** out of Dodge. After waiting a good several seconds, Johnny jumps out after Bodie, and miraculously is instantly right on his tail. Here's yet another movie trying to make me think you can survive while opening your chute this late. F***ing lying-ass movie. But I knew you wouldn't miss a 50-year storm, Bodie. All that stuff earlier about these guys being smart and being ghosts when they rob banks just kind of went out the door, didn't it? Hey, I know I might be getting chased by the FBI, but those killer waves in Australia, man. You gotta go down. You cross the line and people trusted you and they die. It's amazing after Kenneth Branagh saw any of Keanu's work during this period, he said, Keanu would make a great Don John in Much Ado About Nothing. How does this happen? How is Utah allowed back in the good graces of the cops to go after Bodie, but not allowed to bring backup? And a helicopter shows up in a minute, so don't tell me he's out here on his own. The plan was apparently, okay, Utah, you go in alone and we'll send a helicopter in five minutes. Hopefully by then you've cuffed yourself to the suspect. If not, I mean, I don't f***ing know. One wave. My whole life has been about this moment, Johnny. Well, except for the 30 banks you robbed because of the system, but I get your point. Johnny Utah lets Bodie out of the cuffs to ride a once-in-a-lifetime wave because movie. Bodie apparently dies. Johnny walks off without caring and quits being a cop. And scene. Sure, he quits the force because he's going to be fired anyway, but he's also probably brought up on charges, right? I mean, I will if they won't. May I ask why you felt little Tiffany deserved to die? You don't have any idea who you're stealing from? You and your friends are dead! Tommy. 
How's the pooping? Tell me. How's the pooping? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Think about it like the first time he got laid. He's got to go, Daddy, are you sure this is right? My life a quarter mile at a time. Made Gotham a better place? Yeah. Hmm? Ah, me! It's down, eyes down! We're here for the bank's money, not your money. Your money's insured by the federal government, you're not gonna lose a dime. Huh, headed over to the Australian and the Hawaiian internationals, and me and Mick are gonna wing on over to London and jam with the stones.